moderator. Honestly, guys, if it wasn't for him, none of this would be possible. I actually met him at a birthday party because of um, his girlfriend put on a, a surprise party, Haley. Shout out. Uh, but his vibration was so high and it was just so amazing. We had such a phenomenal conversation that I invited him to Music Hustler. So him and I started saying, huh, what can we do together? We started building our tribe together. So please give it up for Mr. Leo. Thank you so much. Check, check. Can y'all hear me? All right. Um, I'm going to start off a panel. Uh, it's going to have four people on it. After that, I'm going to tell y'all a little bit more about myself and take you through a little bit more business stuff before lunch. Um, so right now, I'm going to actually bring up Andy. Andy, where you at? Come on up, Kirk Reed in the back corner here, Anton and Tanes. Are you gonna be able to step out? <laughs> All right, so as a heads up, this panel is called Creating Opportunities. Um, a lot of these guys are highly in, uh, involved in the event scene in Vegas um, and other ventures as well. They have opportunities for you all to come out and perform potentially and then be able to explain how you can create your own opportunities because they've all hosted events from the ground up. Um, so hopefully we can pick their brains so you guys can start either getting booked from one of these guys or any of their friends and then also even um, get some knowledge on how to create an event and just book yourself. So um, first and foremost, uh, if you want to introduce yourself, Anton, and uh, what you do, and uh, if you want to do that's just like one two sentences about who you are and what you do. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Antonius. Uh, I am uh, one of the owners of this wonderful company called Worldwide Connection. Um, I've been uh, very much in tune with the community for the last 15, 20 years. Uh, we have a show that's called Tuesday Blend. Uh, it's an artist dancer showcase that we do here in the city uh, where we give um, artists opportunities to uh, show their skills on stage. You know, Moreover than that, uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Uh, I love art. I call myself an artist of life because, uh, you know, the world is my canvas every day. So uh, I'm just grateful to be here. Uh, shout out to V and uh, everybody that's been doing this, man. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, what's up, everybody? My name is Tanes. Um, I just like to create things. <laughs> there you go, man. <laughs> I can't even pass that one up. Fuck. <laughs> Uh, my name is Andy Herrera. I'm the music director in Sacramento at KRYC. And also, I'm a consultant, music consultant for different Latin artists and uh, hip hop artists. And uh, I started with Priority Records and TVT. I worked with Pitbull and stuff like that for many years and with Master P and all these other Bay Area rappers. I'm from Oakland, California. I live here now. And I created Latin Music Week Las Vegas, which is a showcase that showcases up and coming Latin artists every year. We do it with the Grammys uh, in November. This year it's November 15th to the 17th. And, and just to chime in, Tanessa is also one of the co-founders of Worldwide Connection. So across the board, we have people doing showcases and talent booking and bookings at venues in general. So hopefully we take up some knowledge and can get you guys involved in the community. All right, so I'm going to start off with uh, a question for everybody. I know the common ground between you guys is event production. Um, what do you believe is the best way to get seen and booked in Las Vegas for either small or big events? Um... I guess in one word, as simple as it is, consistency. You know, uh, you have to stay tapped in with uh, whatever network, whatever market you're trying to appeal to, and you just have to be consistent. I mean, I know that that's probably a broken record for everybody, but it's just the biggest fact that there is. If you're not consistent, yeah, I mean, you think about it. You know, musicians, artists, you come up with a with a banger tr with a banger song, and and you know, it's it's gone within a week, couple weeks. You know, um, so without the consistency. You know, you can you can you have a tendency to be forgettable, you know. Yeah, that's a good answer, and also just be um, just be passionate about it and like show up. You know what I mean? Like, there's so many things that that uh, you know people like ourselves put together, and uh, like V and Leo and whatever we have here. You know, you want to support it as much as you can. I mean, I know everybody's busy with life, but uh, yeah, just being just being passionate. If you're passionate about something, you're gonna do it. You know what I mean? 
Um, I guess um, my world's a little different because it's a Latino world, but uh, I would say pretty much be consistent, but also, you know, be humble and be aware of doing something for free. Don't look at it for free. Look at it as an opportunity to show who you are and what you bring to the table. I meet a lot of artists who brag and brag about a whole bunch of stuff, but they can't even sell two tickets. And I know people who don't brag, and they're selling 200 tickets. So those are the people that I look for, and when I do certain situations and stuff like that, and um, that's just me, my point of view right there. Bars. Very nice. Um, right now, we talked about how to, you know, get yourself involved in the c in the ongoings of the city that's already happening. Um, another way to get involved in the in the city is to actually create your own opportunities or create your own events. Um, I'm sure everybody here is hosting an event from the ground up, from the planning portion to the execution. Um, I've seen all of you guys' stuff online. I've even been to many of you guys' events. Um, so, with that said, what is like one to two things that you think someone will need to know to start hosting their own events and then booking themselves and their friends instead of going to reach out to other people? <coughs> I, I can pretty much speak on this one a lot. Um, so, you know, knowing what your position is, it's like you always want to start off obviously using somebody else's venue. Um, the thing is from where we come from is we started off that way where it was a small venue and we like worked our way up, you know, like it, we, um, uh, once you get to that position where you're doing like a like let's say a Brooklyn Bowl or something, and this is speaking from you know if you really want to do your own shit, you gotta like obviously have the experience. But once you get to that level where you're doing something at at, at a venue, when you kind of realize what you get by working with a big corporation versus what you can do on your own. It's a drastic difference, but you can't just like cut out, cut out doing something somewhere first and just open up your own venue because you got to build a reputation. You know what I mean? So, I mean, we've been doing events for like over 15 years, like starting from like nothing, like literally like nothing, and then doing everything on our own. And once you get to that level, you think, oh yeah, hey, we're at a Hard Rock, we're at a House of Blues, we're at whatever. You know what I mean? It's just you start to realize what you can do if you just did it on your own because there's so many people that you got to go through and um yeah it's just it's 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 a good experience to do that but i mean to answer your question if you really want to do your own events it, it takes a lot of experience i think a big factor too is uh uh getting hip to the business behind it you know what i mean there's so many legal things that happen behind this whole the, the behind the scenes thing you lose a lot of money if you don't do it right, you know, you might have the illest, you might have the illest party in the city for that night. Like you might hire the best uh, artist or whatever, spend all that money. But then at the end of the night, you're, you're counting and you're like, yo, we're still $20,000 behind, you know, um, uh, you have to definitely set a goal for yourselves. You know, you start here, but then you have to notice your progression and, and, and do something about it. I mean, with us, I mean, you know, with our Worldwide Connection team, our focus is to really, you know, own our own venue. And the more venues that we own, the more we can dictate, you know, how we want the event to be done, uh, the type of events that we want to throw, and we can and we can really, um, uh, you know, f um, uh, control the amount of money that's being made, you know? Like, there's so much attached to it, but yeah. That's so true. When uh, I started doing after parties for Latin Grammys, people always told me that I couldn't do it. And all I did is just put my, just went to 
my first nightclub in at Manly Bay, and they they told me, yeah, sure, you guys can do something. And that was the beginning with my uh, partnership with MGM. So I started in '09, and then I just continued doing after parties for Latin Grammys, and then I got I was at LAX, I was at um, was this another Cat House that was there. I did Bellagio, the bank, and I did all these things on my own with you know just limited people. And then uh, in 2000 something, I started doing this idea. Okay, hey, let's just do showcases. And a lot of my friends said, "Man, you're crazy. No one in Vegas is gonna let you do showcases at the casinos." Well, I've been doing them. I've been doing the Hard Rock now. Uh, luckily, uh, Hard Rock Cafe was just last past year. I did them at the Link Pool. I did them at uh, Manly Bay. I just did Rhythm and Riffs over there. Uh, I did Eye Candy. I did all these venues um, that are pretty much impossible, as they told me, but I pulled it off. And uh, now I'm going on my, this this will, this year will be 11 years doing all these parties and stuff. And, um, you know, it's it's happening. It's not, it's but it's been a struggle, of course. You know, we lost a lot of money in the starting. I made zero money in the first couple of shows. But, you know, I had to grind and let them see what I do. And now, you know, I just got a call yesterday from him, Park MGM. Hey, Andy, come on, we need you to do uh, this Latin night for us. I'm like, all right. So there I am once again. So it's just all about, you know, people understanding, you know, what you do and how good you do stuff and, and, and if they believe in you. You know, that's the biggest thing. Um, I, I couldn't believe what I did this past year. I did, I did Koi inside Planet Hollywood, and I was like, you know, they're like, uh, no one's gonna, f you know, walk all over there after the Grammys. And I'm like, okay. So we did a thousand people that night. They didn't even know what the hell to do. They didn't even know how to bring all those people in. But it was great, you know. And uh, that's pretty much just <laughs> trying to do things, you know, and have pe have people believe in you. That's the key. That's a big key for me. Love it. Very nice. Thank you. Um, yeah, so this is all different perspectives, which is cool. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't want it to sound like the way that, that we went is the right way or, or whatnot, because we, we definitely went through those channels as well. Um, and it's just at the end of the day, it's like what, what you really want to, uh, you know, speaking to um, what the guy said earlier as far as like an end game. I mean, when we had, uh, when we had I don't know if you guys remember CMXX, but when we got that spot, we, that was like, what we could do there and being in control of everything and, and not uh, not having a specific bar that people had to meet in order to be in our venue. Um, it's, just, it's just really powerful. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just different perspectives is basically what I wanted to say. I didn't want to come off like an yeah, asshole. Yeah, though. definitely feel it. There, there's, there's many different ways to take it and um, actually you learn something from everybody. Everyone has their own experience. And if you guys try to host your own event, you're gonna go through learning curves that none of these guys have gone through or myself. Um, one thing is, you know, you're always going to start hosting your events. Um, this way you don't have to actually go and shop yourself. You can actually just book yourself, right? Um, a lot of the times you start off solo with these ideas and you're launching this plan, but eventually you start building out a team. You can't wear all the hats, work the door and the stage and perform. Um, it's impossible. You got to get some volunteers or you eventually got to start paying people to join the team. What's one position that you find valuable on your event staff? And um, what is their role, and how does that kind of help execute the event? So what's one role that you love on the event team? What's their, uh, um, their task, and uh, how does it help out your team? The, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, I got to catch my throat. The talent coordinator, that's the guy. Your talent coordinator is probably the most vital part of your, uh, of your show because without, without a quality program, 
uh, you don't get to retain your your uh, your event goers. You don't you don't get to retain your consumers. You know, so. Love that. That's for sure. <laughs> What's their role? Is everything? <laughs> Andy, got anything to chime in? Uh, I don't know. I usually do everything myself sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, there we go. <laughs> but, you know, I got my homeboys. But, you know, I mean, pretty much, you know, it's it comes out of my mind. So I pretty much just do everything. I got the homies there, and we take care. I got my wife doing this, and I got yep. my daughter doing that. And then we just – it's like a more like a team thing. Gotcha. A weird team thing, but, you know, it just gets done. So, I mean, once I – go out of my circle, then I got to retrain somebody how I think. Okay. And, you know, and that's, you know, for me to go through that takes time. And I do things a certain way. And um, it's hard to find people to understand me, you know. Definitely. Um, I have a question for Kirk. And it's building off the same topic because I've done events with Kirk since 2016. It is, what, 2022 20, now? So we're going on six years together. Um what do you think are like the most important roles to launch an event? And then, and I want you guys to take notes on this, um, whether that's like a doors person, what are just like four or five things that come to mind, um, just so they can start thinking about what different aspects of people they want to bring onto their team. Perfect. You guys got anything to chime in on the Tuesday blend side? Um, honestly, some of the best people that we've had work with us were our interns, you know? The interns that we would pick up, because these were people that, that we didn't have to ask. Like, when you don't have to ask somebody to be a part of, y of, of your team or of, or of your tribe or of your company, they're, they're willing to do whatever it takes. You can really see the passion in them, you know what I mean? And when you ask them to do things, like if, if we were to go out and be like, hey, you want to intern for Blend, whatever, whatever, before they would even find interest in it, 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 it would almost seem like they're doing us a favor. And I don't know, through experience, that seemed to have been a, the worst possible scenario because they start to blame you for everything, <laughs> you know, if, if things don't go their way. But if you find these, 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 these diamonds in the rough that are able to come through, not just help you, but actually bring more value to your business without asking to be paid just because they're, they're willing to learn, you know, the people that are there that are working to learn are some of the most valuable people you ever come across, you know, and, and honestly, you know, money is always just a byproduct of everything that you do. As long as you're doing what you love, you're in the game, you know? So. Hey, I'll, I'll say this. That is so true. There's several events that we threw that we broke even or lost money, so all of us literally worked for free, the entire team. And we did it because we loved it, and it helped inspire the city to build a music community, which we're trying to do here. Um, and still collected those emails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Still got the emails. Just like Christine, she said those are valuable 100%. So um, a couple other things I want to throw out just to get it on your radar. You probably want a sound guy, right? Um, you probably want a stage manager if you guys are having some acts come on. Um, and then we're going to shift the focus right now to this topic. You would likely either want to be good at promoting yourself or you're going to want a promotions team to get people through the doors because the last thing you want is to spend 60 days planning an event and then there's literally two people in the crowd. So let's shift over to marketing and promotions. Um, how, I mean, I went to Tuesday Blend on March 1st. I actually DJed for them for my first time. And there was probably, you know, a couple hundred people that walked through the door in the entirety. Um, and then during the last performance, the crowd actually went pretty far out for, the, for what I consider the headlining act. Um, how did you get those people through the door? Do you guys have a promotions team, promotions plan? Um, how does that whole thing roll out? Uh, 
I mean, you got to think it's been going on for like 11 years already, yeah? So it, I don't, we're just so unorthodox. I mean, we never had any type of marketing budget or, or we, don't s we didn't start off like the traditional way. It's I, I came to Vegas in 2005. I'm originally from Hawaii. I left to Japan. I branded myself out there, started a clothing line, blah, 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 whatever. I came here and I just saw a lot of white space as far as like there was a lot of venues that were open and weren't being used. So I just used my parties and uh, use that to kind of like sell whatever it else it was that I had. But like I said, there was no marketing budget. I didn't know anybody. And it was just, I really, I really just had to package things properly, talk to the, the most people I could talk to, uh, going back to what we speak, spoke about earlier, show up to all these events. I, I, I figured out what events were going on. Um, I didn't want to step on any toes and I wanted to work with people. So you obviously got to support first. And the last thing you want to do is like come into somebody else's territory and try to like take over. You know what I mean? So I think the reason why we're around so long is because, um, you know, we've done it in a more like personable way. And to answer your question, um, it, it I, I guess it would be like word of mouth. Like I think still word of mouth is probably still one you, of the strongest. You guys are like grandfathered in. Yeah, pretty much. That's for you guys. Yeah, it's like uh, you have a niche crowd. And you got that niche crowd, and you just killed it. Yeah, I and mean, that's basically, what you guys did. yeah, that's good. That's yeah, good. basically, and that's dope. The same thing with the artists. We had to be consistent. We had to stay consistent, right? The quality of our brand had to continue to grow. But the coolest thing about it is that, you know how it's funny. You go to a supermarket, and the organic foods are always the most expensive, but actually, the organic marketing is always the most, the cheapest route. It's free. It's a lot of work, but if if you're able, you know, to to really continue to to um, uh, grow the relationship or like you know uh, maintain the relationship with, with all of your networks and I guess it's it's this thing that you call the cool factor too you know what I mean like the the, the city when it's it's really small Vegas it's, you know it's growing it's growing but it's really really small and as long as you get that core community to rock with you they're always going to bring people you know and I guess our niche was the fact that we had an 18 and up event and this 18 and up event also came with people who were ready to perform for their peers, you know, and 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 I think that that was the biggest niche too, man. And um, uh, I think that if you if you just care for the people that come to your event and you make sure that they're always having fun, they're always taken care of, and you're not like you're not like that guy that just says, "Oh, this is my event, uh, whatever. I'm too cool for everybody." Like, nah, that's not how we get down, you know. And um, I, I think that building those ne those organic relationships are are super super valuable for you know the successor journey of uh, the successor failure of your journey with the, with the, with event stuff. So. For sure, I love that. You're trying to build a community around whatever you're doing. Whether it's artists, whether it's content promoters, you want to make a connection with the people who support you, whether that's in terms of your music, your art, your talent, your skills, your talent. Like, I really think that you want to be part of that. And not just showing up and then expecting to see nothing but dollar signs. You want to be part of that. You want to have that the person who says, I like to give people a good dollar sign for what they want, and I'm always going to give something back. And just try to build that Feel that, a Andy? How did those thousand people end up at uh, your event? I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> but nah, it was a. We gotta be more uh, like him. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> once again, it's uh, I just have a niche crowd for some weird reason. I Love just, it. I just know how to, you know, to throw it on Eventbrite. I mean, this year I was blessed to do digital billboards. Uh, we had awesome. I had the digital billboard right on Planet Hollywood, promoting the after party. Um, but I mean, you already know people really don't see that. You know, it's more of a flex. I see all the digital billboards. It's more of a flex thing. Um, but I don't know. I mean, people just just I would say word of mouth because a lot of people that showed up there was they didn't have an RSVP. They just heard about it cool. and they just went. Sounds you know? like word of mouth is the common ground across the board. Yeah. Oh but yeah. It's got to sure. be a cool event. Like I never heard <laughs> of this. I never heard of the blend till right now. But V told me about it when I had a meeting with her. Now I want to go. It just sounds cool, you know. It's what definitely I'm saying? unique. So let's let's talk about that. I'm gonna go down the row and ask you a little bit about your specific events. Um, so what is Tuesday Blend and Worldwide Connection? If you don't mind um, explaining to the crowd, so they have an understanding of what your guys' um, events and business is, and potentially tell us how they can get involved. So what is it, and how can they get involved? 
Um, okay, I'll do the Tuesday blend. Uh, the Founders Tuesday blend is uh, JR right there in the back, right, of uh, running the cameras. And Tanesh, they started this um, uh, back in 1942. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, and um, uh, it was... Uh, and then when I came in about 11 or 10 years ago, 10 years ago, um, uh, the beauty about it for me coming into it was seeing like, yo, I've never seen a party with people performing, but they're performing for their fellow peers, right? And it's not like it's a paper play event. I used to throw this show called the Dunk Exchange, right? The DXC was a buy, sell, and trade sneaker event. But then everybody that performed on my stage, I did a paper play, right? Because to us, that was an avenue of monetization, right? But with Blend, they're like, nah, bro, we just put them on. We just put them on. Like, yo, they're, they're, they're super sick dancers. Like, I think that they would be a real asset to the, you know, to, to the party. Not only that, they're going to bring all their friends. Same thing with the rappers. Same thing with the singers, the dancers, the magicians. Like, all sorts of people that would come. And, um, and uh, it, 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 it really blossomed. And it's interesting how it's never been duplicated. I think m people have tried, but... You know, it, it's missing that sauce. I don't know what it is, man, but it's crazy. And and we're so humbled every we're so humbled every day to know that no matter what happens, we have blend. No matter what happens, we have blend. And no matter where we go, they're gonna come follow us. You know, and, and it's 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 that built in core community. The eighteen and up factor for us was gigantic. You know, I'm probably giving away our secrets, but it's okay. <laughs> the eighteen and up factor was 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 that you know that was uh, eighteen and up factor is a huge factor. That's huge, bro. Huge. Because people just don't look, get that though. Because look, these eighteen and up, these eighteen and up kids. You're eighteen. You go to this party. You're partying with twenty one plus year olds. You're like, oh shit, this is dope. And now you're telling your seventeen year old homies, like, yo, y'all gotta pull up. Y'all, I'm about to be eighteen. I'm about to be eighteen. They get so excited when they get there. You know what I mean? And and in, in their heads, they've already been in the party before they even got to the party. And then once they get there, it's already a guaranteed good time for them. You know, that's the coolest part. And so Tuesday Blend, I think, is um, it's, 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 a, it's a way that we get to stay connected and tapped in with our community. You know, the, the talent and the artists and the people get a free stage to get on and, and, and really, like, show up and show out, you know. And, and the vibe is always so cool. We never have fights. Our parties never have fights. There's never scraps. There's never fights. People get hella drunk. <laughs> you know, like, people get hella faded. But everybody is all good vibes with each other. And I think that's that's a really dope part. I mean, from the DJs that we put on to the artists that we put on to the dancers, um, you know. And at the end of the day, we're truly grateful for everybody that does participate in our events. So. Um, so Tuesday Blend, in a nutshell, they've got dancers. They've got Dancers Showcase. They've got b uh, bands, they've got DJs, and they've got uh, performers, live performers. So it's a little bit of everything. And what I just heard right now is actually they've had mu uh, magicians there. Um, so it's a little bit of everything from a creativity level. Um, so don't feel like you can't get involved, because I'm sure you fit one of those categories. How can they get involved if they're interested in the future? Uh, follow our social media, DM us. Walk up to us, talk to us, you know, um, uh, or come to our show. Come to our show, experience it first, and see, you know, see the kind of energy that we bring. But yeah, we're 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 a click away, man. You you guys know our DM or you guys know our social media pages. Uh, you can hit up Rizzo. He's somewhere back there um, too. He's <laughs> he handles all of our talent. Uh, otherwise, you know, if if any of you guys want to get involved, let us know. You know, granted, we do have a little bit of a waiting list. But if you're dope, if we vet you and you're dope, like dude, we'll put you on off rip. You know, and if you have like a solid following, like bring them on. You know what I mean? Let's 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 run it. Let's have a good time. You know, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, man. It's a variety show more than anything else. Nice. And then for Latin Grammy Week, and we'll touch base a little bit on the radio too, right after this. For Latin Grammy Week showcases, um, what exactly is that in a nutshell? And then how can they get involved if they're um, in your niche of music? Um, well, basically, they go to Latin Music Week, uh, LatinMusicWeek.com. <coughs> they submit stuff in there, and then. What we do, we don't just you know, here get on to perform. We do a huge package for them. So with my back, you know, my background and all my friends who are in different parts of, you know, they work for Universal Latino, Sony Latino, you know, different, you know, spectrums of the Latin market. We do a like a press situation. This year, I'm bringing in a gentleman who owns 22 Spanish stations, uh, Bolivia. He has uh, Medellin, Colombia. The DR, Dominican Republic, he has some stations in Puerto Rico. So we, what we do is we give them what, we give an up and coming Latin artist what they would have, they would probably take about five years to do. And we give them to them one big bundle. We charge a certain amount, um, but it's more of a package that we sell to them. 
But when they leave there, it's really up to them what they do with all the knowledge that we give them. We give them DJs. We give them, because I work with DJ City, so I have my guys from DJ City. I got my guys from BPM there. So we, you know, I, I said, here's all the DJs. Here's all the radio. Here's your radio interview. Here's your TV interviews. Here's all your press. Here's all your magazines. Do it. And if they sit there, and I've seen some artists just sit there and drink all night. And they don't do nothing. And then they're looking at everybody like, wow, I was here and all these other guys are already here when we left. They're already getting gigs. They're doing this. They're doing that. By, but the dude has just been drinking with his homies. He's the guy who fails. But he's just trying to flex the Vegas thing. And these are, I see these every year. And then they get mad at us. I'm like, yo, everybody that came in here is succeeding. It's not my fault. You know, and... Literally, we have to put that on the contract now, <laughs> that this is what you're going to do. And if you don't show up, that's on you. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, we do this. And since I work with the radio stations, you know, um, we have, like, this year we brought in a podcast. And, um, and, you know, we give them everything that we can give them. And especially the DJ, to me, is one of the most important things in any genre. Um, just, you know, I used to be the vice president of Bum Squads in, in Arizona before it became, like, you know, all the other you know, all the other DJ stuff. And uh, I work with uh, mixshowtools.com out of the Bay. And we do, <coughs> we do the same thing over there. They come in and then they release a record to about 1,200 DJs and we get feedback. So everything happens that same week. In two days, they do everything. And that's pretty much what we do with Latin Music Week every year. Cool. So what is the website again? If they uh, want to reach out? LatinMusicWeek.com. LatinMusicWeek.com. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you very much, Andy. Yeah. Oh, and for and that, just one yeah, thing, one thing. Uh, this year, um, I work with Selena's brother, A.B. Quintanilla, um, so to, to like everyone knows Selena, right? So we are, me and my cousin, we have the official, we have the only Selena tribute, and it's going to be the last one that the family is going to let us have. So uh, we are launching it November 5th in Fresno, but we have a couple other dates coming in. So this is the official one that, uses the image of Selena, the autograph of Selena, and we bring in a lot of situations that complete the, um, the, uh, the event and make it really good for the fans. Like this year, we have the lowrider, the one that pulled the bus in the movie and the bumper fell off. Yep. So we have that lowrider and that guy who drove that car who owns it there. So that's a huge thing for a real Selena fan. Those are huge things. So we have that, and we have a couple other little things that we're going to be bringing in. But uh, look look out for that November 5th in Visalia, California. That's the f uh, one of the shows. The tickets go on sale on that one on the 4th. You got any opening spots for DJs or anything? <laughs> That's what every DJ hits me up on that. I I'm not saying it for me. I'm saying it for the crowd. Oh. We're trying to find them opportunities. Man, it's, Just it's, in case. It's, not a, it's actually Selena's uh, would be... Nephew, which is AB's son, okay. who is, uh, he's a DJ. His name is Principe Q. He's actually DJing it. Okay. So, that's it. Hey, all good. <laughs> I had to ask just in case it's there was an opening. Good. It's all good. It's all good. All right. And so, Kirk, what is the niche of We The Beat? And then for We The Beat and Brooklyn Bull, if people wanted to send their stuff or get involved in a booking, who could they reach out to? Um, what's the next steps for them? Nice. If they don't have a good answer, I'm like, hey, we don't know. So our best employees are the ones that we come in and say, that's where we're located, that's where we're from, that's where we're from. And they're like, oh, I've never heard of you. And we figure out our own lane and that's where we go. So does that go for artists as well? Come hang out, yeah. get a vibe? No doubt. Okay. Like that goes to all the schools and all the clubs. We have local people. We do that all the time. We just do it. Like we do music for you to find out your crowd. We do other artists. That's what you want. 
<laughs> Very nice. Um, that's great. Yeah, you ain't going to get booked from your bedroom. I love that. And go to the shows that you think fit your brand. Um, thank you so much for that, Kirk. We have one more thing. They're going to explain Worldwide Connection, then we're going to wrap it up. Um, Tuesday Blend is a sub-brand under Worldwide Connection, so um, Anton's going to talk a little bit more about that. Or Tines. Oh, So um, Worldwide Connection was literally built during the, um, the lockdown. We um, had a spot called the Junction Complex in um, the Boulevard Mall, and we had a back door. So when the mall was closed, we just let people in. You know? and, and Worldwide Connection is basically doing what we do in, in real life. Um, and, and the only way we knew how to keep in touch with people that we've been um, building with overseas in Tokyo and Manila um, was to just kind of go the online route. You know, this is when everybody was like doing Twitch and all that shit. And um, we basically suck at YouTube, but we figured YouTube was the only way that we could uh, provide some sort of online connection with our with our uh, our crowd, and basically what we did was one of the things we did was we did like reviews. You know how people watch like certain um, videos and they they review it or whatever. We did that thing, but we invited fellow artists, and we only had them review uh, whether it was artists from Manila, for, from Tokyo, anything that was overseas. So that way, it kind of like. Um, yeah, it bridged the gap, and it wasn't like we were just doing this for views. It was actually, uh, you know, um, a precursor to like uh, to, to collaboration. Basically, that's what connection is. K and X N, and I, I gotta mention um, Junction Sound, which uh, Dawson's gonna be speaking soon on it. But uh, but Junction Sound is another part of it. Uh, you know, we dabble in in art, fashion the events, uh, we just do so much shit. And it's like Worldwide Connection was the only way we could really put things together during the time um, that nobody could do anything. So right now we're actually still in the works of, of really trying to push forward and um, and realize the bigger goals. So right now we're, we're working on um, like a Las Vegas connection and then obviously there's gonna be a Tokyo connection, Manila connection. So let's say it's kind of like a VIP type of like membership type of club. And it's 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 exclusively for creatives. So if you're a creative, like let's say you're a music artist, and you go to Tokyo and you're part of the worldwide connection, you'd already be plugged in with like the major guys out there already. So yeah, it's I it's love that. All right, yo, we had a good time talking to y'all today. I appreciate your time. Everybody, give a round of applause for our panelists, yo.